Yes, Mr. Gandhari. Uh, my name is Edith Kim. Actually, I'm a formal personal physician to Aung San Suu Kyi. I was with her from 1988 to 1989, July, until she was put under house arrest. My question is uh, regarding the upcoming referendum and the election. Uh, we as Burmese people are expecting that there will be lots of cheating of this, uh, the referendum re results. So I just want to find out the capacity of the UN, uh, how to ensure that the, the referendum is uh, free and fair. Thank you. Okay, let me, I think these are very weighty questions. Uh, let me try to respond. Yeah. Um, Swing in the region. Um, yes, I, I identify countries that I feel that um, um, can help me in the good of the role of the Secretary General. Um, particularly India, China, and then ASEAN, uh, particularly the chair of the ASEAN in Singapore. Thailand, for obvious reasons, because uh, it's one of the biggest neighbors. Indonesia, uh, that always wanted to play a big role in it, in ASEAN, commenced with, with his stature and, and weight. Uh, I want to apologize that I didn't uh, go to um, uh, Manila, uh, not out of flight, but it's like going to Manila is like preaching to the, going to preach to the combatant. Because you are right that they are the most vigorous in, um, in persuading, I mean, in, in forcefully speaking uh, for human rights and for democracy uh, in uh, uh, Myanmar. If I understand that uh, the president has said, and in fact told me when I met her in, uh, in uh, Singapore, uh, that they will not ratify the new ASEAN Charter on Human Rights and Democratization uh, as long as the situation in Myanmar continues to be the way it is. So it's, it's, um, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not a slide, and I intend to go at some point to, uh, to Manila. But what, are they, what is the view of ASEAN? I, I think the general feeling I, uh, I get is that better you than us, <laughs> if you have to deal, because if you look at the experience, they, uh, Indonesia, has tried to ally a lot of, uh, the president has tried political challenges that you have and not to add more burdens to your list because you have already a number of them and you may be running out of paper and pencil soon <laughs> but how do you see your role if at all as being supportive to the UN actors who are already there so the UNHCR, the ILOs, the UNICEFs, etc. and I not to take away from the, what the previous question was all about in terms of your support to the people but you know to the UN agencies who are there and then lest we forget, uh, I didn't forget because in fact I on the program was Charles Petrie, but I'm not Charles Petrie. But there's certainly been no replacement for Charles <coughs> Petrie. And I'm just wondering if it would be appropriate or if you have a chance, again, not to add to your already long list of wants and asks, but you know, we need to get a new humanitarian coordinator in place. That's important. There's some other agencies, including our own, that don't have a new representative in place. And I'm just wondering if you see your role as being uh, opportune to raise some of those issues for the UN family that's that's working in the country uh, to to try and create some additional space and, and trying to get some some uh, some some conclusions or also some of the things that are that are required that are missing in, in terms of UN representation. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, candor and your frankness. Uh